Hello everyone, welcome to Eternal Brews. My name is Pojo, and we are showing off something special today. So this is my Tomorrow Never Dies brew. This is uh, something that I've always really liked to be playing with. Uh, it is a New Tomorrow deck, and uh, we really like playing around with New Tomorrow in a lot of different ways. Uh, so it's just a really fun card. I've always enjoyed sort of the way that it plays and how it plays in big control. I think it's a really, really solid card and so a lot of big control decks. And uh, yeah, it's something that's really worth uh, taking a look at if you want to sort of play with a different type of control archetype. So let's go ahead and talk about the card and we'll talk about the deck and play a few games with it. All right, so the main card here is A New Tomorrow. Play the top 10 power from your deck, depleted. And while that might seem like a fairly minimal effect, it is actually very, very good for a bunch of different reasons. So here's the central things that New Tomorrow does for you. First off, it does, of course, play 10 power off of your deck, depleted, putting you up to 20 power after playing A New Tomorrow. Uh, with Martial Ironthorn, you get to uh, double up on that power and get 30. Uh, if you have a lot of Iron Thorns, then you can get a lot more, of course. So uh, all of the power that you could ever possibly want for anything that you could ever possibly want is a pretty good deal because it means that, uh, of course, card draw cards become a lot better. You can just play as many card draw cards as you like and uh, draw a bunch of cards, and then you can play out all of your threats as well. Uh, anything that is like really, really big is really playable, and that's really important. But the main strength of A New Tomorrow, aside from the fact that it gives you all the power you want to play all of the cards that you want, is that it, in fact, allows you to just draw nothing but gas for the rest of the game. Because you play the top 10 power from your deck depleted, you no longer have power on top of your deck ever. And as it turns out, power is the last thing you need at that point. Like at this point, you now have the capacity to play any card that you want, so you never need to draw power. So you're always drawing the most effective card that you can be drawing. That really, really helps out a control deck, and it typically means that after a casting of a new tomorrow, if your deck is properly oriented around it, you can actually get essentially just like really perfect hands and perfect draws for the rest of the game. And that will typically win you the game if you can cast a new tomorrow at all. So that's the basic idea. Uh, of course, this card is also very good with a Great Parliament, and that is sort of the big finisher of the deck. As a four-cost card, it plays a 4-4 four, four Owl with flying for every four maximum powers that you have. Uh, you can get five Owls off of just a regular New Tomorrow. Oftentimes, you'll end up with six. Uh, as many as 12 have been played out of this particular setup, and uh, it's, it's really, really fun when you get them all, of course. But this is one of your primary win cons. The other big expensive win cons that you have are Aid of the Huru, which is stun each enemy unit, play two 4-4 four, four owls with flying, draw four cards, good old buffs to Aid of the Huru, and gain four armor. Now, this card does basically everything for you. It stabilizes your board, it draws you extra cards, so it gets you a lot of value. Um, it makes sure that you're proof against cards like Flame Blast and other types of like burn spells that might kill you on a turn that you're playing Aid of the Huru, and it stuns every enemy unit so that they can't attack you for the turn. So no matter what, it buys you at least one turn and gives you two big Big threats that you can actually use to start pressuring the board. That's really important because that means that Aid of the Huru is a card that is good when played from behind. And that, I think, is actually kind of the important thing about Aid of the Huru, is that when you're playing Aid of the Huru, you get to play it in a situation where uh, it's not a win more card, it is a card that just wins the game when you play it, even if you are behind. It basically just gets you into a situation where uh, you completely flip the table and have a really solid effect on your opponent. Now, of course, Aid of the Huru draws a bunch of cards, and since you have cast a new tomorrow, hopefully by this point, uh, you get to play those cards as well, and that includes cards like Channel the Tempest, which says draw three cards, deal damage equal to the number of cards in your hand. This, uh, this one might actually go down a little bit now that Aid of the Huru is better, but I like it at two because it is another, like, a sort of secondary finisher for your setup. So Channel and Great Parliament comprise the primary finishers in this deck. Um, so, yeah, between these two cards, you can draw a lot of dense threats. Of course, uh, with New Tomorrow, whatever the cards you're drawing are going to be very useful for you in a lot of different situations. And uh, from there, you can just sort of swarm the board with your very best stuff and basically have a good time of it. It's really, really good. It's a lot of fun to do that kind of stuff. And then uh, other stuff is all about sort of setting up and also coming back from behind. Uh, we do have one other big 12 drop, and that is Spirit of Resistance, the 10-10 that kills all other units and attachments. As much as I would like this card to have a different name, it is still pretty good design for this particular deck, and uh, it is something that is well worth playing 
If you are in a situation where you're up against a Chalice deck or a Praxis Tokens deck or some sort of go-wide strategy that's trying to sort of pressure you out in a way that you can't really get ahead of on value, Spirit of Resistance shuts that down. And it's one of the many ways that we have of balancing out the board and sort of forcing our opponent to deal with us on uh, what I would say fair and balanced terms, which is to say that it's not fair and balanced at all because all of your cards are generally better than theirs. So let's talk about what we're trying to do to our opponent and how we're trying to take control of the game uh, from the ground up. So first things first, we want consistent power. Find the Way is the primary card for this particular setup. It is a two cost card that draws two sigils of your choice from your deck because it is an echo card and is depleted when played. Uh, now, of course, this card is really, really good for setting up uh, a lot of power. It's very, very good at flooding you, essentially, and you really want to flood in this. You want to actually get up to that 10 power that a new tomorrow offers. With Find the Way and Seek Power both in your deck, you have a very, very high chance of getting to your five drops, uh, particularly Iron Thorn. And and uh, typically getting some power to play into Iron Thorn as well. You can often play power consistently on curve, and that's really important to the deck's overall strategy, which is rival 1, 4, four find the way, and 3, seek power. This is a really good sort of setup for big control decks, anything that wants to play really expensive cards. I really recommend find the way for those types of decks, and I recommend it in even small doses for other types of control decks. So very, very fun stuff. Uh, to control the board, we keep four Desert Marshals, of course, one of the standard sort of silence and ambush and do all sorts of great things to stop your opponent types of cards. This card is very, very good at sort of making sure that you can stabilize in a lot of situations. It can get rid of big problem threats. It can block uh, small aggro units, and uh, it can do that as a surprise and remove them from the game. It's very, very fun. The Fun Police is just a, a solid way to sort of set things up and make sure that you knock aggro down. Lightning Storm also knocks aggro decks down, and we run four of these to consistently get them as much as possible, because this is one of the best ways to shut down the type of deck that is going to really kind of run all roughshod over you, which is the Rakano decks and the Stonescar decks and the Skycrag decks. If we can Lightning Storm all of their stuff, typically they're not going to have as much damage, and we are going to have a better chance of getting to a point where we can recover, so that's fairly important. Combre Healer also stops aggro pretty well. It gains you a decent amount of life, which is definitely relevant, and it also gives you a good blocker against some of the like bigger units. The blocker is pretty hard to kill. That 2-5 unit is just very, very good for defending. We like this level of stats, and we like the extra health gain. That's why we also run Lumen Defender at the top to make sure that we can continue to gain life and continue to defend ourselves against not only small units, but big ones. So yeah, extra health gain, very important. I keep a 1 of Decay in here, and we have uh, Celestial omens as a primary method of drawing any sort of particular card that we want. So we can pick up one decay if we need to. We have spirit of resistance as like sort of a decent pickup. And most of the time, celestial omen is going to be fetching a new tomorrow or martial iron thorn to help get to a new tomorrow. So fairly important stuff there. Beyond that, we have some card draw. Wisdom of the Elders is a really good way to basically just get yourself up a little bit more in power and also to set up for a little better game after you've cast a new tomorrow. Just means that you have more card draw, means that you can play more cards. So it tends to be very useful. We like this in threes or fours. Reign of Frogs, I have found to be very important as a four of in this deck. Uh, it says choose a non-power card from your enemy player's hand and transform each copy of their into their hand, deck, and void into 1-1 one, one Frogs with Destiny. And the thing that this card really does well is it kills all the control killers. So if your opponent's trying to win the game with a Flame Blast, then Rain of Frogs gets rid of all of the Flame Blasts in their deck. If they're trying to outvalue your control deck with Heart of the Vaults, Rain of Frogs gets rid of all the Heart of Vaults in, your, in their deck. If their plan is like sort of a mid-range style, uh, you can often Rain of Frogs the Sandstorm Titan. If it's a Chalice deck, you can sometimes Rain of Frogs the Chalice. Basically, we try and get whatever particular card provides the best synergy and the best value to the opponent's deck, and then we just deal with the frogs with the Lightning Storm or with Harsh Rule. And as a result, we can stabilize the board a lot better. Uh, we typically take a small hit as a result of this, but because we have a lot of cards that gain us life, uh, we don't mind gutting some part of our opponent's deck in an effort to make sure that we basically deal with only the cards that we feel we are best equipped to deal with. Uh, there are a lot of things that can slip past a control deck, and if you aren't running cards like Reign of Frogs or Sabotage or things like that where you can actually shut down particular things that are very, very bad for you in a general way, then uh, you're going to have some issues. So I really like Reign of Frogs. I found that it's very effective in this deck. I would not sell this card short as a 4 of. 
Okay, Harsh Rule and Leave a Witness both clear the board. I like having sometimes two to three Leave a Witness in this deck. Uh, currently, I'm trying to cut one for the Celestial Omen, so I have a better chance of drawing new tomorrow. But I may change that around depending on how I feel about it. Uh, regardless, I would say that having a high density of kill all units in your deck is very, very effective in this game. Uh, we aren't playing a super strong board early, so we have a lot of chances to Harsh Rule for extreme value. And that means that we can, of course, stabilize the board a lot better and then set up cards like Lumen Defender or Ironthorn to sort of like basically defend against uh, anything that gets played down afterwards. That's the basic idea behind the deck. We just basically stall, we gain life, we uh, remove a lot of threats, uh, we balance out the board anytime it gets a little bit too unbalanced, and then we use Leave a Witness sometimes to even unbalance the board a little bit more than we want it to. Um, so once we have all of that done, we cast a new tomorrow, we start channeling and aiding, and uh, we use Great Parliament sometimes to finish the game. And yeah, it's really, really fun. It's a great version of the deck to play. You can actually play a lot of different little one ofs in here and a lot of different new tricks. Uh, I like this version because it's sort of like the more, most simplified version, and it's pretty competitive. I would say that it's decent enough. It's not... Uh, it's doing, yeah, it's doing about even on the ladder right now, which is good for me. Uh, I would feel, or I feel good about it. And uh, I think uh, you guys will have some fun with this card deck as well. So we're going to go ahead and talk about it. And uh, we're going to go ahead and play some games. I will see you there. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I will see you there. All right, we are recording against Moblack. We have some like fancy stuff from the new setup. Oh, I actually forgot to set my Eternal Throne thing. That's okay, we'll fix it. Uh, anyways, what we have here is an almost strong opening hand, but with these hands, typically what I am looking for is three to four power. I don't wanna see just a seek power and a seat. We wanna be able to play consistent power every turn, so this hand is really, really bad for our overall game plan. This is a lot better. Like even though it has very few playable cards, we don't mind too much because we get to play Harsh Rule uh, as a finisher. So like, yeah, it's really, really fun. Uh, so like if we get into trouble, we can just Harsh Rule. We've got the find the ways to set up a little bit. I'm just gonna play Seed of Wisdom here. And uh, we can consider getting some double green, which seems like a pretty good idea. All right, there's a Rain of Frogs in there. I'm pretty happy to see that. I am going to go ahead and find the way. And we're gonna grab a green. Right now, things are going pretty well according to plan. My opponent is playing Stone Scar, which means that there's probably going to be something scary on three. Oh, but it's an Armory deck, so less likely. We are seeing a Dark Wisp here. That suggests that the deck is maybe Callus. Uh, that is an interesting setup. Okay, so in terms of power, we need triple green for uh, the one um, Leave a Witness and quadruple blue for Channel the Tempest. But the main things to hit are two blue for Wisdom of the Elders and two green for Harsh Roll. If you can hit those, your deck will pretty much function uh, almost like, you know, 95% of the time. And then after that, you have to hit three and four. And if you can hit those, that's totally fine. We've already hit the necessary requirements. We have the green, we have the blue. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start searching for the quadruple blue because that certainly appeals to me. I would like to be casting Channel the Tempest at some point. And I don't think that this deck is going to have a lot of stuff for me to harsh rule or leave a witness. So going for the leave a witness plan is a little bit less strong to me. Okay, next up, I will play... I think I'm going to hide the Justice Sigil, and we're going to play a Primal instead. And then I will Reign of Frogs. We're going to get the Statuary Maidens out of his deck, or any other card that really kind of threatens us. Could be a Protect here. If there is, well, that's a bummer. Okay, my opponent devoured, which I think is just the worst thing, because now I have like access to a huge percentage of his deck. There are a lot of options here. Okay, so I'm seeing two dark returns. And I think the two Dark Returns are the best card to get. Devour is not bad either for like card draw, and sort of Akari is a card that I have some difficulty dealing with, but not a lot. I would say that Dark Return here is probably the card that I want to hit, because that means that I get rid of the Memory Dredger with a Harsh Rule, and then I don't have to deal with it again for a very long time. So we'll take the Dark Returns out of his deck. That also means he can't like continually recur Obsidian Golem, or a couple of other things that I would really rather he not, Obsidi not have. So. 
All right, we get a quarry here. And we'll probably see memory dredger, but we might see instead a sort of Akaria. I think he didn't draw his... I think he already played a power, so we probably should see sort of Akaria here. Which is a bit of a shame, because I would really prefer to... Uh, harsh rule on specific turns, but I think we're okay. We'll just play a primal sigil here. And we're looking pretty set. I can harsh rule when I need to. Gonna see another devour here on a frog. I'm getting attacked for three a turn. But the obsidian golem is the only card that's actually doing anything crazy. All right, and there's the memory dredger, cool. So at this point, we feel perfectly comfortable in playing the Elysian Banner, <laughs> which, whoops, I hid the justice for the harsh roll, and I, yeah, that was a huge misplay. That's okay, though, because we'll just, he'll get back a unit, he'll get back a Dark Wisp, which is actually kind of to my detriment, and uh, yeah, we're just going to play that justice and uh, play the harsh roll. I'm going to take some damage here that I really shouldn't have taken. That's like six points. All right. All right, we messed that up pretty bad. That's okay. Okay, so sort of a Karya happens. Not a lot I can do about that, uh, except I have Decay, so I can Decay it. That gains me some life back. Uh, and I have Harsh Rule. I can also Celestial Omen for like an Iron Thorn if I want to. I think I will instead Harsh Rule. Now the thing I really want to get here is I want a Celestial Omen for an Iron Thorn as soon as possible. My opponent has drawn a lot of cards, so it's possible he's going to have some cool stuff going on, but looks like nope. So we'll go ahead and play a Seat of Progress here. And I will end my turn. And a Justice happens. And I'm going to Omen. And I'm going to grab Iron Thorn. This is important because then I get to Iron Thorn and play the time. And now I can new tomorrow next turn without any problems. All right, Moblock could be playing a lot of different things. We'll be very likely to see some sort of combust or slay. There's the slay. And Xenon Cultist, not a card that I care about too much. I could Reign of Frogs here, but I think a new tomorrow is absolutely the card that I want to play. And that puts us at 20. We are now in a really good position. I'm going to take three this turn. My opponent is going to start trying to rush me down, but I have eight of the Hoodoo in hand. So we are going to have a little bit of fun. Life is going to get good. And despite the fact that I took like six damage that I shouldn't have taken, I think we're in very strong control of this game. Find the way I can actually find power typically after a new tomorrow, which is a nice little feature of uh, the many nerfs that a new tomorrow has endured over the course of uh, the game. It used to seek the top 12 power, but now it's usually got just enough that you can find the way for power if you need to. In any case, what I'm actually going to do this turn is Eight of the Huru. We see a pause here. My opponent might have a Protect or a Devour or something cool. All right, went for the Devour. And I have a bunch of owls, which is nice. Now we rain of frogs. Harsh rule kills all my owls, and I don't really love that plan. Let's get rid of the harsh rules, and then let's play a bunch of owls. All right, so that's uh, pretty much lethal right there on the board. And that's game. Simple solutions, and uh, despite a pretty horrific mistake, I would say that that went pretty well. So, good stuff. All right, here we go. We're up against Monsoon. Got my Eternal Throne already. Uh, justice, Justice, Desert Marshal, Wisdom, Rain. A lot of interesting options here. I'd probably say that the one I want to look for here... Yeah, we, we want three power, and we want to have power in different colors, so I don't think that this is a very good hand. Yeah, this is much better. We've got three power. We have the Combre Healer. I need to draw some more power to make it really worth it, but uh, with the Find the Way or the Seek Power grabbing blue, I will be able to play Combre Healers on my uh, next three turns. So that should be pretty good. We'll grab our first blue, play a Seed of Progress. And then it's Combre Healer into Combre Healer. 
which should help out against this sort of like fast Rakano style deck. Alright, Desert Marshal is a really cool card against the Warcries, but Combre Healer is the card here for sure. And we'll see if my opponent wants to like attack in with a Finest Hour or something like that. I think I'm fine if he does want to do that. But it doesn't look like he actually has an answer, so that's really good for us. This is a thing that Combra Healer can do sometimes. It sometimes just makes it so that the uh, aggro deck can't attack. At this point, getting a bigger Combra Healer would not be a bad idea. Um, this deck, like, the answers are all going to be Finest Hours or Vanquishes. They don't have a way to deal with a 2-8 uh, Combra Healer beyond just playing a bunch of dudes on it. So I think we have a really good chance of just uh, defending ourselves every turn if we make that a 2-8. Silverwing Commander is a scarier card, I would say. Uh, let's go ahead and Desert Marshal that, because I don't feel like a Warcry 2 today. And then I'll play the Elysian Banner. Now this is perfect. I actually have a blue left over, which is something that I really, really want for the Marshal Ironthorn. Um, I can just chump block here, and I probably will. Seems reasonable. Like, we could do, like, a double block of some kind, but I don't really feel comfortable with that. Okay, so Marshall Ironthorn plays, and play the Primals. <laughs> and the uh, Eternal Throne opens. That's pretty cool. Go ahead and end my turn. We're looking pretty psyched about that. Vanquish, okay. And a bunch of attacks from a bunch of different sources. I'm going to block the 2-2 two -two and block the 5-5 five -five and just take 6. Alright, my opponent doesn't have anything else to play. We're going to leave a witness. And wipe his board. And now I can fill my own board with great parliaments, get a good start. My opponent is running Inspire, which is a, a thing that you can be running to be certain. Found a lightning storm. At this point I think I want to play Great Parliament. We need some more dudes to defend ourselves. I would like to just be a little more offensive in the case that I cannot draw a Celestial Omen or a New Tomorrow. And looks like uh, that's already enough to just sort of, like, just stymieing the Rakano deck is good enough to develop the board and win out the game. Sometimes you win the game without New Tomorrow, and that is certainly the case in this situation. So, good stuff. Alright, we are up against Eggy Knack. And my opening hand has three colors and four power in it, so I think I'm pretty psyched about it. This looks pretty cool. We'll play a Primal Sigil. And I think I'll seek power for a green. That should be a pretty good deal. Really liking this Eternal Throne. This is pretty cool. Can I click on anything here? Ah, oh, I can click on the banners. That's cool. They're actually physics altered, which is neat. Like, wherever you click on them actually kind of changes the way it wiggles. Good stuff. All right, play a Justice here. That'll end my turn. And another Justice here. Shifting into order, looking pretty good. <laughs> this game might actually be me just getting distracted by the shiny new Eternal Throne we've made. <laughs> pretty fun stuff. All right, anyways. Um, so yes, I've got four power available and I found the double green that I really need. Play a time here, find the way for primal, find the way for primal. And that gets us pretty close to being able to cast Channel the Tempest, which is important stuff. Alright, Egginak is going to play out his primal, and it looks like he's playing something in a similar vein to what I'm doing. Might be playing Voda Combo, that's a pretty good card in this particular setup. Great Parliament seems not worth playing here, although it might be nice to get a Vanquish out of his hand early. Now, Marshall Ironthorn with the Primal, of course, really, really good for setting up our own Channel the Tempest. Uh, this, he might be playing my list. It is It was actually on the Reddit for a little while, so we'll see. Go ahead and play 
up to seven here. And we're we're in the cold. Looking pretty good. Now if I draw any sort of power I can cast channel next turn, although it has to be undepleted power. I will be able to cast channel off of any power that I draw though, so I'm feeling pretty comfy with that. Yeah, and this just looks like it is my list, so that's that's good to see. Um, the fact that I'm way closer to actually casting like a new tomorrow seems like a pretty good deal for me. So we'll just go ahead and pick up more justice? More time, I suppose. Since I've already got all of the influence requirements that I need. And we're up against the mirror. Found a desert marshal, cool. And a seat power from Egginak there. Eight of the Huru is very close to castable, but I'm not going to cast it this turn. I do have enough to kill the Lumen Defender, which seems like not a bad idea. And now all of these depleted power are playable. I like the Spirit of Resistance here, but I like the Reign of Frogs more. So let's go ahead and play out... I'm going to say this Time Sigil, since the Seed of Wisdom may end up undepleted. And that would be very nice for me. My opponent casting Wisdom. Now we want to hit cards like Channel or Aid in his deck. If we can hit a new Tomorrow in particular, I think that's very good for us. Yeah, that's very, very good for us. So we'll rain once. Okay, it's not quite a perfect mirror because there are Auric Runehammers in my opponent's deck. Um, Auric Runehammers don't do a lot against me, but they're also, like, I mean, Desert Marshals aren't that scary. I think the Auric Runehammer is probably the right call. And I don't want to Reign of Frogs again because we've already got pretty much everything we need in this situation. So we'll just play a Great Parliament and make sure that we have some defense. The next turn, I can Aid of the Huru or I can Channel, depending on what I've got. My opponent found a Wisdom. I think if I'd seen that, I might have actually taken that instead. Okay, that's to be expected. And your own Froggy. Okay, so we're going to Channel here. Just hit him in the face. Get our card draw off. And I can't quite cast Reign of Frogs this turn. But I have another one, so we definitely want to start picking this deck apart and getting all of the cards we can out of it. Uh, Desert Marshal should persist. I think Lumen Defender is not that helpful in this matchup. And I'm not actually certain about Spirit of Resistance either. We'll, we'll take the Lumen Defender out. This might be a Chalice deck. Some sort of like... Um... Yeah, actually, it is a Chalice deck. Okay, good to know. So, there's a couple of options here. The one that I particularly like is it's written right here. just Spirit of Resistance. But we might try Reign of Frogging first. We found the channel. That's an important card to find. If you got the channel out of his deck, then that's his big win condition. So that feels really strong. Now we play a Legion Banner. And we probably just harsh rule this board. No point in taking extra damage from anything when we have four Harsh Rules in hand. We should win the Chalice matchup handily with the Spirit of Resistance. He's going to get to draw some cards here, but I'm already pretty close to casting eight of the Huru, so I'm not feeling particularly threatened. Seed of Wisdom? I kind of want to see another Chalice before I Spirit of Resistance. Yeah, let's go ahead and go for it. We'll eight of the Huru here. Make our Owls draw our cards. That's a pretty good pickup. And that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 cards. Not a lot I can do about that except for seek power to draw some power out of my deck, and then probably just discard that power. Or not. I actually think it's better to hold the power and discard the Desert Marshal, because there's not really all that many things I want to silence in this deck. So now I get to do something cool. I get to Iron Thorn into New Tomorrow. Which I would say is a very, very strong way to start this game off. Now that we've gotten the channels out of the Chalice deck, there's just not a lot left that can threaten us. We could see like an Island's Choice 
uh, which would counter the new tomorrow, but he's not going to be able to do that on two. So I think I'm feeling very comfortable. Marshall Ironthorn plays, a new tomorrow plays. And then we have a good 26 power there, and uh, the throne starts humming. Looking pretty good. All right. There we go, 36. Okay, so we feel real comfy now. Um, my opponent hasn't played like any sort of big, big stuff. We've got some big stuff of our own to play. I've got some life gain in here. I've got Celestial Omen. I'm probably going to Reign of Frogs him again. Thank you, Desert Marshal's fine. We don't really care about our stuff getting silenced anymore. I kind of want to see what else is in his hand. Let's go ahead and see. Eh, Combray Healer's a bit obnoxious. We'll cut that out. And then uh, beyond that, we can play our own Combray Healers. We can force the board. I think Combray Healer's definitely a good idea here. And Spirit of Resistance is also a good idea. Uh, that That's fair. Um... Yeah, let's just go ahead and end my turn, though. Actually, I should have Celestial Omen for a bunch of owls. I should be pushing to win the game. But that's okay. I've actually got a lot of interesting ways to win the game, so... Let's go ahead and do the most obvious one. We're going to Celestial Omen for Great Parliament. That's nine owls, which seems like a pretty good amount. I could have uh, left a witness first to clear this board out, but I don't think I'm worried about how many things he has. So there's my lethal. Let's see what you can do with that. Got a harsh roll. Okay. So how many harsh rolls is that? There's one, two, three harsh rules so far. So we'll Celestial Omen for... I think I'm going to go for Eight of the Huru this time. And I'm actually going to go... Oh, I found a Decay, so I don't even need to Spirit of Resistance. Eight of the Huru. And odds are pretty good that draws me some more owls. And there you go. We have some card draw, but we don't really need to uh, set it up. I've got 11 owls, and my opponent is probably out of harsh rolls. So that'll be game. <laughs> it's good, good stuff. So yeah, that's the basic idea behind the deck. Something I forgot to mention about the deck, of course, is that if you a new tomorrow, Marshall Ironthorn is always an instant activation to uh, basically wipe your opponent's side of the board without any issues. So always a fun thing to do. Here's another version of the deck that we run called Ironthorn Impossible, which is a fun little sort of shadow version of the deck where we are trying to kill them with the last word after a new tomorrow. So you can just a new tomorrow, uh, and then when you have 20 power, there's things available to you, such as the the last word into an activation into harsh rule and win the game just cute little things to do we also run seraph in this version because we actually have space for her um i have found that cards like sandstorm titan and seraph are quite good in this deck at times and often can be very good includes if you're looking for some slots to fill um i like my current version uh, with the blue stuff just because like i think that like actually stabilizing on board is more important than setting up a really really good uh seraph uh, because there's so many other things that you can do with the power but uh, if you want to include some seraphs in that deck by all means be my guest uh this version has a lot of space for seraph so we're actually pretty happy to run her and we also run cards like subvert a zindel's gift uh sleepless night card that I'm quite dearly fond of and it's really fun in control. And the new Banishes, which uh, should probably be a four of now that it is a cheaper card. Let's go ahead and just make that adjustment right now. Oh, oh, well, that's why it's a three of apparently, because I've only got three copies. So <laughs> uh, in any case, uh, yeah, four of Banish is pretty good here. And then uh, maybe like run one last Seek or something along those lines. But 
yeah, this is the shadow version of the deck. It's a lot of fun to play. I highly recommend you check it out. That's it for today's Eternal Brews. Uh, I will be putting up the stream of the puzzles uh, either today or tomorrow, so look out for those. And, uh, well, uh, or don't look out for those if you don't want to know about the puzzles, because by all means, I don't want to spoil those for you. Um, and uh, beyond that, we'll be working on some Eternal Basics videos pretty soon. Uh, we're going to have more Brews videos up, and I'm real excited to be playing in this new meta at the new awesome things that have happened with this patch are going to be really, really exciting. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time. And until then, enjoy playing dirtily fun new tomorrow decks. Have a really good night. Bye.